You know, when I was young, I grew up in a fairly strict house, always knowing right from wrong, and for the most part, always been able to decipher what I should or should not be doing. And now that I'm a parent, I realize that having and enforcing a set of rules is an extremely important part to an orderly and functional household. And any trader that wants to make it for the long haul must also have a strict set of rules and make sure we stick to them. Because at the end of the day, what good are rules, even if we break them, maybe two to three times a year? You know, there's nothing worse to me personally than taking a loss in the market that can wipe out weeks or maybe even months of trading. You feel like the last several weeks or months got simply flushed down the toilet. You know, you spend day in, day out grinding out wins, grinding out trades, only to have everything, you know, be wiped out. It can be mentally demoralizing and very hard to get your mind back on reset. You know, it's the financial part of the loss that hurts the most, but the mental and emotional part be can, can be just as bad because if you're not trading, with a free and clear mind, you may as well go home. That's how even some great traders can get caught up in a vicious cycle. Once the losses start, they almost don't know how to get themselves out of it. That's why I think it's so important to try to stick to your rules and limit your losses. You know, one of the great benefits of being a trader is that we're our own boss. We work from home, and for the most part, we answer to nobody. It's really everybody's dream job. But you know, on the flip side, there's nobody there to hold us accountable. So let's say we all were to work for a company, it doesn't matter whether it's big or small, and two to three times a year we bend the rules, or two to three times a year we just make that same mistake over and over again, and we cost this company tens of thousands or possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars. What would that company say to you? You know, most likely you'd be out of a job. That's why it's so important as self-employed individuals, traders, we hold ourselves accountable for our actions. Now, as a trader, I realize the most important thing I can do on a daily basis is preserve my capital. Take an excessive risk, taking on marginal trades, or adding to losing trades is an easy way for losses to add up. You know, sometimes as traders, we're always focusing on the next big setup. How much are we going to make on VERI? How much are we going to make on this? How much did I make last week or last month? But how often we focus on what we're doing poorly? How often we focus on our losses? You know, I think our losses can be a great tool to help us create some rules. I think our losses, you know, can help us study and say, hey, this is what I don't want to do again. This is what I don't want to do in the future. You know, the thing about trading, it's a very tough profession. I think the stats are something like 90 to 95% of traders fail. And why do they fail? They don't fail because of a lack of winning setups or lack of wins. They fail because of their losses. They fail because they just take too many losses too frequently or just that one big loss. I mean, that's the thing, in the market, one loss can wipe you out and end your career. That's where a good set of rules can either make you or break you for the long haul. Now, trading can be a difficult profession for that can we sit in front of our computers all day long and we feel unproductive if we're not always in a trade or pushing buttons. You know, we follow traders on Twitter who tweet a new idea or ticker every 35 seconds, and we say, hey, that guy trades 80 to 90 tickers a day. I need to do the same thing. No, I think that's BS. I, don't, I, I think you should not do the same thing. I think you need to stick with your high probability setups, the setups you know you're going to be profitable on, I'd say at least 75, 80, hopefully 90% of the time. Now, sometimes it can be hard to sit on your hands and, and be patient and wait for those setups, but why, tr why chase subpar setups? You know, why chase boredom trades. Why put good money after bad? Now, how many of us here of traders have followed a chat room, a Twitter, or a friend into an idea that we knew was not a high probability setup for our own trading style? Now, we all have different trading styles here. What works for you may not work for me. Personally, I'm a terrible long bias trader. If and when I ever do go long, I take profits extremely fast, knowing that a lot of times profits can just get, a, get away from me pretty quick. I don't have the patience nor the conviction you know, to hold them. That's why month after month, year after year, I personally get more strict about the trades that I place. I probably place half the amount of trades I did maybe just five years ago, but I make way more money. Why? Because I trade the high probability setups, setups that I know I'm going to be profitable in 80 to 90% of the time. I like to use size with those trades, and I have very strict rules when it comes to cutting losses. Now, I'm sure most of us as traders have rules, or at least we should. How many of us use stops? I mean, stops are a must. I mean, we all have to use stops. Now, I personally rarely use hard stops, but I have mental stops on every position that I take. Basically, if something's breaking support or resistance, I usually just exit that trade. 
And I think most of us here need to have a mental idea in our head of where we're going to exit a trade based on, you know, based on where it goes against us. How many of us here have ever been in a losing trade and we're down something small, maybe $5,000, and we think, oh, I'm not going to cut it. You know, I feel like this is going to be a winner, and we add to that trade. An hour later, we're down twenty dollars to $30,000, and we think, wow, it's hard to, you know, I can't cut it now. We hold it till the afternoon. Maybe tomorrow it gaps up. We're down seventy, eighty, dollars dollars $100,000, and we think, what the heck just happened? I mean, I could have cut that loss yesterday for three, four, five grand. Now I've given up 10, maybe 20% of my year just by being stubborn. Think about how much more money we could make at the end of the year if we just stick to some simple rules and cut our losses at an appropriate place. Now, for me personally, I very rarely enter a trade, unless it's with starter size, something really small, unless I know I'm going to be in the money immediately. You know, I ask the question, why would you ever enter a trade knowing it's going to go against you? And you say, well, I'll just add higher. I mean, why would you ever want to do that? You know, I, per I personally like to be right on my first entry, and if I'm not, I cut it, and I look for a re-entry. You know, the last thing I want to do, again, is be stubborn, refuse to cut a loss, add to losers, and before you know it, you've given up 10, 20, maybe 30% of your year on any particular setup. I see so many traders that can consistently make money month after month after month, only at the end of the year realize they, they were stubborn on three to four tickers, and they gave up, you know, maybe 20 to 30% of the year. Now let's talk about being stubborn for a minute. Why is it that we refuse to cut losses? Is it that we f sometimes we refuse to be wrong? Or has the research we've done on any particular stock made us so overly biased that we think the market is wrong and we are right? Or did we possibly take on too much size overnight on a low float stock that's opened dramatically against us? You know, there, there's numerous reasons we take losses in the market and a majority of them are our fault. You know, we can say, well, Drys was manipulated when it went from 5 to 115. Or, you know, KBIO was a fluke when Shrelly bought it and went from 2 to, you know, what, 40s within a couple days. And those are true. I mean, Drys was manipulated. But at the end of the day, nobody forced us to hold Drys, you know, from 40 to 60 to 80 to 100. Nobody forced us to hold KBIO. Some people added after hours. Some people added, the net, you know, a few days later. You know, I think at the end of the day, our losses are, are, you know, they're basically our fault. I mean, sure, there's always, there can be unexpected news or events, but at the end of the day, I think it's our stubbornness that leads to some of our biggest losses. Now, I personally have a lot of rules in my trading. I've already went over a couple of them. Most of them are just ingrained in my head. I know I'm just like walking, talking, eating, and sleeping. I don't even have to think about them. But I'll go over a quick, you know, uh, a couple of my top rules again real quick. I like to trade the best setups out there, so, setups that I know I'm going to be profitable on 80 to 90% of the time. And I like to use size with those setups. You know, I ask a question. If you, have, if you see a setup and you say, hey, nine out of 10 times I'm going to make money on this setup, why would, you, why would you not want to put big money behind that trade? You know, why would you not want to? I think the risk reward is definitely on your side there. I think, you know, for me personally, the big money's in the big wins. I'm not going to get rich scalping. It's just not for me. Um, and I certainly know I'm not going to lose money on boredom trades because I just don't play them. You know, if the setup's not there, I sit on my hands. If not, I'll just leave for the day. I, don't, I never feel forced to trade. Second, never, ever add to losing trades. You know, there's a reason the trade is going against you. You're wrong. I mean, it's all there is to say. You need to exit that trade and look for re-entry. And don't ever say to yourself, it can't go higher. I mean, it can't go higher or it can't go lower. For anybody that says it can't go higher, put a chart of drives next to your computer from last November. For anybody that says it can't go lower, put a chart of drives next to your computer from, you know, November 15th to... You know, a few weeks ago, it's down 99.99%. You know, there's a prominent hedge fund manager out there a few years ago that was bullish on Valiant. He was bullish in the 200s, bullish at 180, bullish at 150, bullish at 100, bullish at 80, 60, 40, 20. I think he finally sold at 10 or $15. Why? I mean, it's just stubbornness. I mean, that's all it is to it. It's just stubbornness, in my opinion. Third, take profits on winning trades. You know, I always scale out of positions. Let's say I'm short 50,000 shares of a position and it's reached maybe 70% of my target. I like to take at least a third off right there. Always locks them in. Falls another 10, 15, 20 cents. Take another 10, 15,000 shares off, whatever it is. Don't ever try to be so stubborn to try to pick the exact tops or bottoms. Another one is always trade with a free and clear mind. You know, I've noticed that if I don't sleep well, maybe had a traumatic event in your family, whatever it is, it's just best not to trade. And don't ever trade if you feel obligated or forced to make money. You know, if you had a big loss last week, 
Don't ever revenge trade. You know, you, you really have to have a free and clear mind to trade in the markets. Um, the, the biggest one of all, and lastly, is cut losses, cut losses, cut losses. You know, I think as traders, if we can create a good list of rules with strict stop loss management, I think at the end of the day, we can be, become more profitable traders. Thank you.